He is the Almighty Allah. No God has the right to be worshipped but He. He is the knower of the seen and the unseen. The most merciful, the most kind. He is the King, the King of all kings. He is the pure, He is the holy, He is the giver of peace. He is the giver of security. He is the compeller. He is the supreme. Glory is to Allah. Allah is high and above all those that they associate as partners with Him. He is the creator. He is the maker. He is the fastener. He is the bestower. And He is the all wise. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa la amma ba'd. This series is going to start off with the creation of everything, the creation of the heavens and the earth, the creation of, of angels, jinn, animals, humans, paradise, hellfire when it was first created. In essence, we're going to cover everything that we can inshallah ta'ala of the lives of the prophets, getting into the life of the prophets sallallahu and then we're going to go uh, century by century and discuss some of the major contributions and developments of that century in Muslim history until our time inshallah ta'ala and then we'll move on to the end the signs of the day of judgment and that which comes afterwards paradise and hellfire and so on and so forth let's look at the story of creation rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in the beginning there was allah there was nothing before him in other narration nothing was with him and his throne was on water and he wrote in the tablet everything and he created the heavens and the earth so the first and foremost thing is that Allah Azza wa Jal, in the beginning it was Him as a being and there was nothing else. So He wanted others or creation, He wanted a creation to know Him. So He created the creation. Right at the beginning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the pen. And He told the pen, write whatever is going to happen up to the end. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the angels and then He created the jinn kind. Very interestingly, he created another kind known as the bin kind. Ibn Kathir rahimahullah makes mention of this in one of his books, Al-Bidaya wa Nihaya. So he says in there that there was a certain creature or creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala known as bin, the bin. And they were on the earth. And on the earth they created chaos and havoc and so on. So Allah sent the jinn to deal with the bin on earth. So the jinn came in and they dealt with the bin and they overcame them and overpowered them and destroyed them completely. And who was the head of the jinn? One known as Iblis. First there was Allah and there was absolutely nothing else. You know, no, no throne, no pen, no water, no clouds, no skies, no nothing. It was just Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you think about that and how amazing that is. No air beneath Him, no air above Him. It was just Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that verily everything but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is disposable because it was just Allah and nothing else. You know, Allah created this, Allah created that. And then one of them would say, فَمَنْ خَلَقَ Allah." So then who created Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The problem is you're limiting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by your human dimensions. Allah is not subject to your time. Allah created time that a person might be actually contemplating, doing tadabbur and tafakkur, actually reflecting and contemplating on the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and feeling this high point and saying, who created this? And you would say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're admiring the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then shaitan comes to you, the devil comes to you and says, فَمَنْ خَلَقَ Allah." So then who created Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The Prophet sallallahu he says, when you start to have that thought, quickly say, آمَنْتُ billah. I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the one who exalts the hurumat of Allah, the sanctified things of God, and what is more sanctified than the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This thing that Allah has created as a tajalli of all of His divine attributes and then called us to marvel at it. If you look at people when they see people who, who can do something amazing. You see, you had a, the, a beautiful singer who sings his song and people in the non-Muslim society, you know what they do? If people clap, they do these things, ovation. They do an ovation, right? Which is to, to praise. That is because of what's happening in their hearts. They see something extraordinary and they want to praise that thing because they're seeing something that has affected their soul. And yet, we're in this incredible existence 
this amazing creation, stars in the heavens, galaxies. We've got Hubble telescopes that look at the far corners of the universe, the massive expansiveness. We have flowers that bloom before our eyes. We have animals that can do the most extraordinary things, elephants that can carry extraordinary weight on their backs, but ants even, even more extraordinary that can carry many times their own weight. All of these things happening before us. We have women right now in this room. There's a fetus, a baby developing in their wombs. Mitotic cell division at rapid rates. All of these things are happening everywhere. And we don't feel compelled to give God a standing ovation. To stand up before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Really to stand in ovation before our Lord. Ma harraka bi rabbikal kareem. What has deluded you? What has deluded you? What has taken you away from the praise of your Lord? Oh Allah, you are the first and so there is nothing before you. And you are the last and so there is nothing after you. And you are the manifest, the apparent and so nothing is above you. But at the same time, you are the hidden and so nothing is beyond you.